Hello everyone, this is Madhufuda Raj, this is 24th March 2016 and today we are going to discuss one very important decision, policy measure that was taken by the Indian government last week. So last week on Friday, the finance minister Arun Jaitley uh, declared that they are going to reduce the uh, interest rate on the small savings schemes that uh, you know, individuals in India are having, for example, uh, some of them are for, you know, supposedly saving the taxes and some of them are basically to diversify the risk, for example. Uh, these are the schemes which are mostly, you know, applicable to the middle class families, the people who are working in the organized sector. So, for, for example, the schemes uh, in the post office, the monthly income scheme, the MIS scheme or the uh, public provident fund scheme, the PPF scheme, which mostly the salaried class people use to supposedly save the taxes. I am saying I am saying supposedly to save the taxes because ultimately, when you are going to put your money into this profit, uh, not provident fund accounts, that money is ultimately going to end up in government coffers, and they are going to use that money to give a pension to the you know the present generation. So the, actually there is nothing, you are saving nothing, the, the money is not going to end up into your hand. But anyway, uh, not going into the details of social security, I want to focus today on this on this policy measure taken by the uh, Jaitley and Modi government. Uh, Jaitley is the finance minister. So what they did is, I'm just going to read this news for you. The government announced new interest rate on small savings instruments on Friday. Slashing the returns on public provident fund savings from 8.7% to 8.1% and one year post office deposits from 8.4% to 7.1%. These interest rates will be reset every quarter based on a formula linked to the rate of return on government securities. So they have reduced the rate from 8% to roughly you know 7%. And uh, the finance minister Arun Jaitley, you know, is kind of defending this move uh, by saying something like this. Uh, finance minister Arun Jaitley said the economy needs lower interest rates to become more efficient and high deposit rates would keep it sluggish. So this is the, you know, this is uh, the uh, kind of economics. Uh, that we want to analyze that I want to analyze in today's you know uh, and uh, you know economic you know analysis episode so what Arun Jaitley is saying and then he's saying something more he's saying that uh, this you know uh, high interest rate regime is what is keeping the Indian economy into recession we all know that the Indian economy is struggling right now the growth rates uh, as measured by the gross domestic gross domestic product are pretty much you know low right now and the government is and the government's you know economic advisors are blaming the regime of high interest rate for this lower you know uh, growth rates so they think that lowering the interest rate will basically spur the economy and uh, it would bring the economy out of the recession I, in a while i will go into the details of what is the main argument of uh, of finance minister and the economic advisors of the government uh, uh, let, let just you know focus uh, on what else Mr. Jaitley said. Interest rate had risen a lot, so the cost of borrowing for the government and others was high. But now they have come down. The way the economy is moving, we cannot have a situation where lending rates are going down but deposit rates remain high. Uh, both rates are linked to make the economy more efficient rather than sluggish. The country has to move towards low interest rates in both. The minister pointed out that interest rates or small savings schemes are determined by the market based on an old formula. So he's saying that, uh, you know, a couple of points I want to take out from what he's saying. He's saying that this, as I said, high interest rate is keeping the economy sluggish. Low interest rate is going to make the economy more efficient. And he's saying that interest rates in, in, in the India in Indian economy is basically determined by the market and and then he says that on that they give subsidy to people who are having accounts in PPF and you know uh, monthly incomes you know scheme in post office for example. So 
uh, this lowering of the interest rate is straight away going to you know have a very very adverse impact on obviously all the savers of this country but let us for a second you know uh, uh, reflect on these ideas of mr arun jaitley is it the case that high interest rate is keeping the economy sluggish is it the case that the lower interest rate is going to make economy efficient any you know any sound knowledge of economics will tell you that mr arun jaitley has no clue whatsoever about how the economy works uh, let us first focus on what determines the interest rate he says that market is, market is determining the interest rate right now which is an absolute lie market is not determining interest rate right now it is a it is the central bank of india the reserve bank of india and its governor mr raghuram rajan you know he is the one who is determining the market interest rate right now and as i said based on that interest rate that landing rate then they are reducing this deposit rates so we cannot say that we cannot you know blame the market for this high interest rate or the low interest rate in you know, a you know uh, regime right now because markets market forces of the demand and supply basically the you know we will say in a while that it, when i say market i'm just using it as a metaphor because market is is not a living breathing entity which determines the interest rate it's the billions of individual actors who are participating into this market they are the ones who are determining the interest rate so let's say for a while what determines the interest rate uh, interest rate is a time you know phenomena it's the price of time so what happens is that human action is you know is taking place in time so there are three time dimensions past present and future now human action is mostly concerned with present and future so people want to you know have satisfaction from the goods that they consume in present and they want some of the satisfaction in future so according to what they will do is that if they want to kind of you know have a lot of satisfaction in present they will increase their consumption whatever income they are having they are going to consume you know a very large chunk of that in present and very little will be saved for future now if they have a you know preference for the future they want to you know have maximum satisfaction in future then they will you know save most of the income part a big chunk of the income today and defer their consumption for future now what happens when they save this money saving means investment so this this loanable funds become available in the market and when i say loanable fund i mean real resources not just currency not because money printing money is not saving that's what i have you know said you know many times in my past analysis also i'm again reiterating myself the printing currency not by rbi is not saving saving means saving real resources flow of real goods because ultimately money is just a common medium of exchange we are not going to consume it directly we are going to use it to indirectly get the things which we really want to finally consume the consumers goods so when so for example when people want to consume everything in present there will be very little loanable fund available the supply of loanable fund the supply of saving will be less and according to that the and because demand is there the you know interest rate will be higher when an exactly reverse happens when the supply of saving is higher because people are now preferring to consume in future that means they are they are having very low you know time preference uh, this preference for time is known in economic theory as time preference so when they are preferring the future the interest rate will be lower because the supply of saving is higher the you know supply of loan the fund is higher so that that's why the interest rate is going to be lower so this this societal time preference this time preference of billions of indians is what determines the market interest rate and this this market interest rate is what is you know coordinating the production activity between time so for example if if we want to consume everything right now we say very little so most of the resources are diverting in producing the things which are for immediate consumption so that's the you know interest rate will be very high so the entrepreneurs are not going to start building up long term projects they are going to invest the resources in something that is going to produce things immediately but when we are going to prefer future we save more and interest rate goes down so that gives a signal to the entrepreneurs that consumers are preferring to consume more in future so they start long term projects capital projects which will you know result in higher production in future so this long term capital projects will increase our future income future production and that will increase our future consumption 
So that coordinates the production activity very nicely. Now what is happening is the central bank, the RBI, is artificially manipulating the market interest rate by the printing currency notes by creating, you know, uh, cheap credit, artificial credit, what Mises said, the uh, fiduciary media. They're keeping the interest rates artificially lower from these uh, originary rate of interest, this natural rate of interest, which is determined by the time preference of individuals. And this is giving false signal to the entrepreneurs and when they are starting, you know, long-term projects, the saving actually is not available. And then what happens is artificial boom, which the central banks are creating by keeping the interest rates artificially lower, that boom is ultimately resulting into bust. And because of that, the economies are going to recession. So the truth of the matter is exactly opposite to what Mr. Jaitley is saying. It's the artificially low interest rate regime set by the Indian government because Jaitley is pushing in you know, Rajan to lower the interest rate like what he has done already. This low interest rate policy is the cause of the sluggish economy, not the high interest rate. You understand that? High interest rate is not the you know, cause of sluggish economy. It was the prior low interest rate regime which created the artificial boom is what is you know, resulting into bust and a sluggish economy right now. So what is, you know, Arun Jaitley is doing right now, he's sowing the seed of future bust in the Indian economy. By discouraging the savers, he is going to create a lot of trouble for the Indian economy in the you know, future. See, you have to understand very important fact is that economies will grow, you know, there is only one way for that. And that way is you produce more than what you consume, you save the difference, and you invest the difference wisely in accumulating physical capital and human capital. And this accumulation of physical capital and human capital, the availability of physical capital and human capital, will ultimately aid the productivity of land, labor, and other factors of production. And that will increase the future income. And that is how the economy is going to grow. So for the economy to grow, saving is very, very important. And by reducing the interest rates on the saving schemes, Raghuram and Rajan and Arun Jaitley is, you know, discouraging this very important saving right now. So they are not going to make the economy more efficient by keeping interest rates artificially lower. This, as I said, this artificially lower interest rate is what is keeping the Indian economy sluggish. It is not going to make it efficient. We are, in fact, you know, digging, the government is digging a big hole for us in future by keeping the interest rates artificially lower. So as I said, if you want an efficient economy, if you want the economy to grow, if the Indian government or if the Indian people want the economy to grow, then the government, the Indian government will have to end the most importantly, the Reserve Bank of India will have to stop manipulating this interest rate. And they will have to really let the market, the time preference, the societal time preference of individuals let decide the market interest rate. And it will coordinate the you know, production activity for you know, present and future. And that is how the economy is going to grow you know, uh, and normally. Right now, as I said, Raghuram Rajan and Jaitley, by keeping the interest rate lower and lower, they are creating another artificial you know, bubble, which is going to bust in future. And that is what is going to make the Indian economy sluggish. Not as you know, he is saying. You know, he's saying that the economy needs a lower interest rate to become more efficient. High deposit rates would keep it sluggish. That is absolutely wrong. Exactly opposite to what the economic facts are, right? It, it's the lower interest rate artificially capped by the RBI is what, in, what is keeping the Indian economy sluggish. Not the high deposit rates and not the high lending rates. If they get out, then the time preference, individual's time preference will determine the market rate rate of interest and that will keep the economy going, you know, naturally. So as I said, uh, this defending of, you know, small saving rate cut by Jaitley is absolutely bogus. And I, I am feeling and I'm fearing that the Indian government is right now taking India in, in the regime of most probably, you know, negative interest rate, which we are seeing right now being implemented in countries like Japan and countries like, you know, uh, in Europe, for example, an American central bank is also contemplating right now. Central bankers are not the saviors of the economy. In fact, they are the root cause of all the problems that we are seeing with our economies today. Their manipulation of the market interest rate is what is creating this boom in bust cycles. So when they are the cause of the problem, how we are you know, expecting them to you know, uh, solve our problems. 
by you know, and now right now they have painted themselves in a corner. They have very little so-called tools available now to now to you know uh, fight the next ball you know recession that is you know just coming upon us very quickly. So uh, they are just taking us into uncharted territories like negative interest rate, where borrowers will get more money when they borrow, and the savers will be really get punished. And this is the precisely, precisely, exactly opposite, you know, kind of remedy of what we actually need for the economy to get out of the recession. As I said, saving, investment, and capital accumulation, physical and human capital, both, is what is going to make the economy stronger, not lower interest rate, artificial lower interest rate, and punishing of these savers. So, Mr. Arun Jaitley, if you are going to, if you are really thinking, and I'm sure you're not, you're just a politician, you want to win the votes, you just, you know, take your hands off the Indian economy, stop interfering into the market. But I know they are not going to do that. So, what we will have to do actually is that we will have to take care of ourselves. Now, in this kind of situation, now there is very little choice for the Indian savers. Because the rates are going down and down and down in the banks also, in now in post office also, in provident fund also. Remember, they impose a tax on tax on provident fund, but because of there is a lot of uproar, they just you know kind of you know uh, reverse it back. But then ultimately they reduce the rate. So the incentive for the saver is very little. The incentive for borrow and spend kind of lifestyle is very high over there. And this is all behind all these things. There is this crazy ideology of Keynesianism where they think that consumption is the driver of the economy, which is absolutely incorrect. Consumption is not the driver of the economy. It's the production that drives the economy. Because before you consume anything, you will have to produce it. And for production, as I said, you have to save, invest, accumulate, you know, physical and human capital. And, and that's what, that is the activity which the Indian government is right now actually discouraging. They are discouraging, you know, production. They are discouraging saving and investment. They are encouraging, you know, uh, consumption and consumption is going to drive us into a wall. Consumption is going to ruin us in future. Just imagine if you have 100 rupees and you consume all of them today, what is going to happen in future? What is going to happen in future is you're bankrupt. And that is what the government is encouraging right now. They are going to go bankrupt. The Indian government is already bankrupt. They also want that you and I go bankrupt also following these crazy ideas. So right now, as I said, we have very little refuge. The banks are also not giving enough interest rate. Inflation is very high. The so real interest rate is almost zero. In this case, the only refuge now remains is in you know, all the precious metals, gold and silver. So as I have, I have always said in past, we guys will have to continue to buy gold and silver because as the rates are going to go down and down and down, right, we have very little options. And gold is going to keep up with this inflation. It's going to keep the purchasing power stable. So that's why we have to buy them. And remember, they are after gold also. They have imposed an excise duty on non-silver items also. So dwellers are on strike since like, you know, like something like 20 days now. And as I said, uh, these policies of the government, Modi government, is going to result into absolute disaster for the Indian economic future. But as I said, it just doesn't matter what the government is doing. We have to do exactly the opposite of what government is doing. So we have to go and buy gold and silver. That's the only protection that we have in this low interest rate regime. And I'm fearing kind of negative interest rate coming to India also. That will be, before that, there will be a huge disaster, social chaos and everything. Anyway, so this is what I wanted to discuss today with you guys. You know, as I said, you keep an eye, you know, on, on what is going on. I am here for you guys to, you know, analyze what is going on in the economy. But as I said, things are not, you know, are going to become, you know, good for us in future. So just take care of yourself out there. Thank you very much for watching today and goodbye.